cerebral aneurysm can be best described as a blister on the blood vessel wall. Technically, the blood vessel wall is weakened and it allows for ballooning and a blood to enter that blister. The problem with cerebral aneurysms is if the aneurysm rupture that can lead to devastating side effects. The size of cerebral aneurysms can vary. It can be a small little blister, almost like a pimple, and it can be as significant as a three centimeter aneurysm, those we call giant aneurysms. A cerebral aneurysm is one of the most serious neurological conditions. Patients that suffer from cerebral aneurysms and the uh, approximate annual incidence is close to 30,000 that we know of. 50% of patients don't survive to even make it to the hospital. And the ones that survive, approximately a third of them die within their hospital stay. So it's a uh, devastating condition with significant neurological sequelae. The patients that survive aneurysm rupture and are able to be treated in the hospital, unfortunately a third of that patient population may survive with a significant neurological deficit, so unable to move one side, unable to feed themselves. So they're definitely a devastating neurological condition. Cerebral aneurysms can be treated with a variety of ways. The gold standard of treating cerebral aneurysms is open microsurgical treatment. So that involves a craniotomy, uh, opening up the cranium of the skull, and then ultimately reaching deep where the blood vessels lie within the brain and applying clips, and we call them uh, aneurysm clips, across the neck of the aneurysm to obliterate them from the circulation. Now, over the past 15 to 20 years, aneurysms can be treated with a minimal evasive approach via what we call an endovascular technique. Endovascular meaning entering the aneurysm from the inside of the blood vessel wall and being able to treat it with different options such as packing the aneurysm with coils that are made out of platinum, potentially using balloon or stent assistance if the neck of the aneurysm is wide. And most recently, over the past 10 years, we've actually been able to treat aneurysms with flow diversion, either uh, inside the aneurysm, putting special devices, or across the neck of the aneurysm. If a patient was just diagnosed with a cerebral aneurysm, that doesn't necessarily imply that this is a genetic condition that they will pass on to future generations and their children. However, a minority of patients may suffer from familial aneurysm syndrome. What that means is at least two first-degree relatives have the condition of cerebral aneurysm. Unfortunately, to this day, we, don't, we haven't identified a gene that will be able to screen for such patients. However, we do screen all first-degree relatives in their families with an MR angiogram to ensure that they don't have an aneurysm. I am Dr. Stavropoulos-Makaris. My mission at Jefferson is to improve lives. Mm -hmm.